Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel for this week's hardware breakdown video where we're going to cover the PlayStation 4 Pro specs, especially its GPU, codenamed Neo. Released in November 2016, the PlayStation 4 Pro was Sony's answer to the rising demand for 4K capable gaming, and so today we will break down how Sony tackled that demand with the hardware it upgraded inside the PlayStation 4 Pro, as well as compare it to how it stacks up against the original PlayStation 4. But before we begin, same old intro, if you're new here and like breakdown videos or tech videos in general, consider subscribing to catch my weekly uploads, and if you enjoy this video at all, make sure to pound the like button, that way YouTube will actually show it to others who might feel the same about it. Thank you so much for everything you do supporting me, now let's just get right into the video. Before we break apart the star of the show and the most heavily upgraded component inside the PlayStation 4 Pro, its GPU, let's go ahead and break down some of the other specs that received improvements as well over the base PlayStation that increase the performance of the console overall, starting with its CPU. The PS4 Pro uses an upgraded version of the same AMD Jaguar CPU found in the base PS4. It still uses the same 8 cores found in the PS4, but they have received a clock speed boost to 2.13 GHz over the base console's 1.6. So while the CPU architecture remained the same, the clock bump gave games a little extra breathing room, which was helpful in ensuring smoother frame rates over the base console while still rendering at higher resolutions and even graphic settings, especially in CPU heavy games that had inconsistent frame rates due to the CPU bottleneck. It wasn't a complete game changer due to how low power focused the CPUs of last generation were, but it was a welcome change versus not having any kind of overclock whatsoever. It helped push the console to feel a little bit more premium as it not only rendered higher level graphics and fidelity, but it had equal to or better than performance while doing so in scenarios where the CPU would hold it back. The RAM in the PS4 Pro also did receive a boost, although a lot more subtle. The PS4 Pro still uses 8GB of GDDR5 memory that operated on the same 256-bit memory bus, but its speed was increased and provided a 218GB a second of memory bandwidth, about a 24% increase over the base PlayStation 4's 176GB a second of memory bandwidth. The PlayStation 4 Pro also had access to more RAM when gaming as Sony added an extra 1GB of slower DDR3 RAM RAM to offload some background non-game related operating system tasks from using the faster GDDR5 memory. This allowed more of the GDDR5 memory to be freed up for gaming performance, a little trick that helped squeeze out more from the PS4 Pro without touching the core RAM design much or inflating costs as well in doing so. This freed up single gigabyte gave developers an extra 512 megabytes of GDDR5 RAM for devs to use to help hit higher resolutions and increase the total usable RAM in games from 5 gigabytes in the base PlayStation 4 to 5.5 gigabytes in the PS4 Pro. Another 512 megabytes of the GDDR5 was then also dedicated and reserved for now displaying the upgraded and enhanced 4K version of the dynamic PS4 operating system menu, which now leads us to the star of the show, and again, the largest and most prominent hardware upgrade that the PS4 Pro received, its Neo GPU. With features derived from GCN4 and the Polaris architecture, the GPU was custom made to essentially double the PS4's GPU capability. It came with 36 CUs containing 64 shaders per CU for a total of 2,304 shader processors. These shaders work together simultaneously and are responsible for doing all the math needed for the graphics that'll be shown on the screen. Basically, the more of these, the more advanced graphical effects could be rendered. It operated at a 911 megahertz clock speed and had 144 texture mapping units, which were responsible for applying textures to models, mapping 2D images to 3D objects and the game world. It also had 32 render output units responsible for the final stages of the rendering process and writing the pixel data to the frame buffer, aka your screen. These hardware specs gave the PlayStation 4 Pro the performance capability of 131 1.2 gigatexels a second for a texel fill rate, which is how many texture elements the GPU can sample and apply per second. The higher the texel fill rate, the faster a GPU can fetch and map textures onto 3D models, and this impacts texture quality, material detail, and how fast more complex materials can render. It was also capable of 29.15 gigapixels a second for a pixel fill rate, which is the number of fully processed pixels the GPU can write to the frame buffer per second, and the higher this number is, the more capable the GPU will be with higher resolutions 
and how well it handles effects, like anti-aliasing, HDR, post-processing, and other screen effects. Finally, it was able to achieve 4.2 teraflops of GPU compute power, which is the raw theoretical computing power capability measured in floating point calculations per second. In this case, 4.2 trillion floating point calculations per second specifically. The higher the teraflops, the more complex graphics and effects can be rendered on screen, but comparisons are only viable when comparing same generation and architecture GPU. These GPU specs and the overall capabilities allowed the PlayStation 4 Pro users to experience much higher resolutions than the base PlayStation 4 was capable of while also boosting graphic details in a lot of examples as well. Games like Horizon Zero Dawn, for example, targeted 2160p using checkerboard rendering, providing a much sharper image than the base PlayStation's 1080p resolution, as well as providing more enhanced textures and better texture filtering to boot, while maintaining the same and sometimes better performance than what the base console can offer as well. And to dive into the specific strengths that the PS4 Pro's GPU had over the base console's GPU and where its capabilities really start to separate, let's break down the specs of the PlayStation 4's GPU and compare it to the Pro's. For starters, the base PS4's GPU had 18 CUs, or half the size of the PlayStation 4 Pro's GPU. And Mark Cerny even said they basically just doubled, copy-paste if you will, the 18 CUs to double the size of the GPU and built it with added features from GCN4. It also ran 111 megahertz slower than the PS4 Pro with a 800 megahertz core clock speed. It was estimated to have 72 TMUs, which is half as many as the PS4 Pro, and assisted the PS4 Pro in having higher texture resolutions in a lot of titles while also having higher resolutions even though the RAM didn't get improved all that much giving the PlayStation 4 Pro the ability of having both without costs inflating and them needing to add more and even faster memory. This is more evident in the fact that the PS4 and the PS4 Pro have the exact same number of ROPs total at 32, showing Sony focused areas within the GPU to get the highest resolutions and textures possible in its $400 price target. Using the double CU count and faster GPU clock speed as well as double the TMU count within the GPU to counterbalance the more subtle RAM upgrade. In terms of pure performance, the PS4 was able to render about a third of the Texels as the Pro at 57.6 gigatexels a second, but had about the same pixel fill rate because of the same ROP count at 25.6 gigapixels a second, only increasing on the Pro due to the higher clock speed in the GPU. The PS4 was also able to achieve 1.84 teraflops, less than half the raw graphics graphical power of the Pro thanks to it being half the actual size and about 14% slower in terms of clock speed. A final bonus for the Pro was also that extra half gig of GDDR5 RAM that was allowed thanks to that extra one gigabyte DDR3 RAM edition, which was mostly used to help developers achieve higher resolutions that the Pro targeted as the higher the resolution, the more video memory is needed. But I believe Sony nailed the combination of hardware it was going for, especially when we compare it to the competitor, the Xbox One X, which launched at $100 more and came out later. Sony was able to hit 4K console gaming in the living room first and did so at a competitive price point, being the old PlayStation 4's original launch price point of $400. And in order to achieve that, they focused on areas that would get them the most bang for their buck and without inflating all the costs. And so I think this was a great mix for Sony to go with to provide a 4K gaming console that was able to render higher than 1080p resolutions and provide the best experience for anybody playing and who prefers to play on Sony's platform. Ultimately, the PS4 Pro lived up to its name, creating a console option for the more enthusiast level of console gamer. The Pro's weakness definitely came down to how minor of a memory upgrade it received in comparison to its GPU, and that's just my opinion. Asking a console to render complex game worlds and handle all game logic while rendering at 1440p or above resolutions that we commonly saw on the PS4 Pro with only 5.5 gigabytes is certainly a tough ask, especially when we compare it again to the One X that came out after the PS4 Pro, but did have nine gigabytes available for games because they upgraded from eight total in the Xbox One to 12 total in the Xbox One X, and it was much faster as well. But game developers did come up with great ways to work around this limitation with features like the aforementioned checkerboard rendering, allowing games to hit high resolutions without sacrificing performance or visual fidelity, allowing them to still look fantastic, especially compared to the base consoles. And to be fair, clever optimization definitely further helped this as well, and the admittedly faster overall memory bandwidth, even if it isn't extremely significant, was absolutely welcome, as well 
well as the CPU clock speed boost. Anyway, fam, that's all I have for you in today's breakdown. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you stuck around this long, you're officially a part of my Ramble Squad, and I want to hear you shout yourself out down below so I can thank you personally for being a top supporter. Also, feel free to share some of your favorite memories with the PS4 Pro, or if you didn't get one and why, and let's discuss it. But until next week's video, I hope you all have a great morning, afternoon, or evening, and I'll catch you then. Peace.